Warning, this video contains drinking and swear words. If you're a child or naughty language bothers you, this isn't the video you're looking for. After watching Batman vs Superman, I thought, man, this could have been cleared up in like a 10 minute conversation. And then I thought, why does that seem really familiar? So I watched Batman vs Superman three weeks ago and didn't make a review because I've been really busy. But today I wanted to share with you the top five times a simple conversation could have solved Batman and Superman's problem. And as you can imagine by the fact that I'm breaking this down by decades, this is a continuing problem for these two. They are very poor communicators. Very poor. So let's talk about the top five stories from the 50s where a simple conversation could have solved 99.99% .99 of their problems. Number five, World's Finest Issue 75. In this issue, after being hit with powder, Batman appears to fall and break his leg. Or at least that's what Superman tells him, and Superman being the amazing surgeon he is, sets uh, Bruce's broken leg for him while wearing his Batman costume. Because you know, if I broke my leg, what I would love to be in for the next couple weeks or months? My full fucking Batman costume. Super comfy. I suggest the next time you break your leg, you ask the doctor to first have you put on a, a full body costume and then set your leg around it. Superman then takes Robin and goes out fighting crime while Batman stays in the Batcave, growing more fearful that Robin will enjoy working with Superman better than him. After all, Bruce is a mere mortal with no superpowers. And this issue just keeps getting more and more depressing. Eventually, Batman starts throwing out Robin and his trophies to make room for Superman and Robin's trophies. Eventually, it's revealed that Batman, in fact, didn't have a broken leg. Nor did he need to stay in his costume the entire time. That was just for funsies. Superman reveals that Batman had been exposed to a poison that if he was active, it would have circulated through his system and killed him. Superman made him believe his leg was broken so he'd rest. Instead of saying something like, hey, Bruce, you've been poisoned. Maybe we should see a doctor or I should alert you about this. Uh, maybe you should chill in your mansion for a few days and don't worry, uh, Robin and I will go around solving crime for you. Buddy, I'm gonna put you in some jammies, you're gonna be super comfortable, I'm gonna let Alfred know, and you're just gonna chill for a few days. It's, it's gonna be great. Instead of me putting you in a cast in your full body costume in the Batcave where nobody can get to you, and I'm really not sure how you went to the bathroom these past few days. I'm 100% sure Superman did this on purpose just to let Batman know how easily he could replace him and steal Robin from him. Number four, World's Finest Issue 76. Yeah, it only took till one issue later for them to have communication issues once again. Surprise! Superman and Batman get into a contest for 24 hours to decide which city should host a scientific convention. Which doesn't have to do with communication, but I want you to think about for a second. Metropolis and Gotham can't decide which city should hold a scientific convention. So they have their two heroes switch cities and compete for the most civic duties for 24 hours. That in itself is a little weird. But here's the problem besides how weird that is. A new generator is going to be tested at the convention, which, BT dubs, great place to test your new invention for the first time around a bunch of innocent spectators. Anyways, this new generator will produce a small amount of kryptonite rays, which will paralyze Superman. As the world didn't completely know Superman's weakness yet, if Superman won and the convention was held at Metropolis, he'd be exposed. And the scientist shares this with Batman. You know who would probably be the best person to share that with? Superman. So Batman, of course, does the reasonable thing and shares with Superman about this new invention that creates kryptonite rays and could quite possibly endanger his life in the future. No, he doesn't. This issue could seriously be solved with one conversation. Hey, Superman, this dude invented this, this new generator and if it turns on, it'll create these rays and they'll paralyze you and then everyone will know your weakness. It's super terrible. 
you, you know, we can compete, but you have to make sure that I win, I get one more civic duty than you, and we have the convention in Gotham so that your secret is safe, and we keep you safe because we're best buddies, and we love each other, and just, you gotta listen to me. One conversation. But no, apparently it was easier for Batman to run around trying to outdo Superman. He even performed circus tricks over the city. They actually do the circus trick thing more times than I care to remember, and every time I see it in the comics, I imagine Christian Bale's Batman doing circus tricks over the city with Robin, and it is always hysterical. Batman ends up winning, and the convention is held in Gotham. But Superman, because no one acted like a reasonable adult and told him about the experiment, heads to the convention in Gotham and is paralyzed mid-air. The only thing that saves him is the experiment burns itself up almost immediately. Superman says, and just as well for me, now that I've learned about those kryptonite rays, I realize what Batman did for me. Lied to you? Endangered your life? Kept really important information from you that could quite possibly affect you in the future if this invention was mass-produced and all over the United States and you had no idea why you were randomly being paralyzed all over the place? I read a fucking story with you back then where there was a tiny piece of kryptonite orbiting up in space and it gave you amnesia and you became a completely different person. So I'm assuming rays that would be around you would be even more harmful to you. Yeah, thank God for Batman. You guys have a really fucked up relationship, you know that, right? Number three, World's Finest, issue 84. A man named Thad Linus claims to know Superman's identity. This goes back all the way to Superman being Superboy, and Linus stalking him, trying to figure out his identity. Eventually, Superboy, while trying to stop a fire, leaves his charred fingerprints on a building, and Linus gets his fingerprints, which would identify him as Clark Kent. Superman explains all this to Batman, and that Linus also worked with a young boy to get information. Batman finally reveals he was a small boy, and that he got the fingerprints before Linus could get to them, and that he really wasn't working with the man. He then destroyed the fingerprints so no one would know. Superman asks him, But Batman, why didn't you tell me you were the boy detective years ago and you weren't working with Linus? And Batman leans in and sensually whispers, You know that's not how our relationship works. No, it's because, and let's get a direct quote, I feared if you learned how close you'd been to exposure, it might impair your confidence. Or hey, this could have been a learning experience for the young Superboy. Hey Superboy, I figured out your identity. Uh, just so you know, you should probably be a little more careful in the future. Also, Batman, you probably could have told him this when you first started teaming up, so that this dude named Linus didn't have Superman under his thumb and didn't force him out of Metropolis. One conversation. One conversation. Hey, you want to know a funny story, Superman? I actually figured out your secret identity when you were a small boy, but I ended up burning the fingerprints so that no one else would know because I knew in the future we were going to be BFFs. So that dude that is blackmailing you and threatening you, yeah, you don't have to do anything for him anymore. One conversation. Do you guys know how to adult? World's Finest, Issue 78. Signs begin appearing everywhere saying Superman is Clark Kent. Has someone truly figured it out? Or is one of our heroes dicking around again? Superman. It's Superman. It's Superman. He puts signs everywhere saying Superman is Clark Kent. And honest to God, he goes above and beyond with this. He starts writing it on cars, walls, putting up billboards on a blimp, writings in the sky, the whole nine yards. Superman is committed 100% to this. And then he drags poor Batman into this. And he tells him, Batman, we're BFFs. Somebody knows who I really am, and, and they're going to expose me. You are the world's greatest detective. I know. I know every second you're in Metropolis, people are dying in Gotham. I know. But I need you. I I'm desperate. You're the only one who can figure this out. You're my soulmate. Please. 
Please, Batman, help me. And of course, being Superman's best buddy, Batman throws his heart and soul into trying to figure out who is coming after poor, innocent Clark Kent. This goes so far that Batman impersonates Superman to get him off the hook. Finally, Batman figures out that Superman is fucking with him, and Superman has to explain himself. He heard rumors that a mob was trying to get rid of Batman, and he suspected a deadly trap. So to get Batman out of Gotham, Superman pretended he needed him. Hey Batman, there's a new mob in town that I'm sure you're aware of because you're the world's greatest detective and it's your own city, and I think they have a deadly trap for you. We should work together, take care of the mob, and get this threat out of Gotham. Why, Superman, that's a great idea. See, by communicating with each other, we solved this problem so quickly, instead of wasting days on a wild goose chase while people are murdered left and right in Gotham. God, I love that we're adults and we know how to fucking communicate. Also, when are mobs not trying to get rid of Batman? What's Superman gonna do? Pull this elaborate shit every time he suspects a trap? He's totally gonna pull this shit every time he suspects an elaborate trap. That's exactly what he's gonna do. Lastly, World's Finest Issue 94. Superman uses a robot but pretends it's his new crime-fighting partner, Power Man, and tells Batman to piss off. That's basically it. He's super cruel about it, too. Like, if I was Superman's friend, at this point, I would be like, you know, I feel like you know that a simple conversation could solve a lot of her problems, but you don't do it because you like hurting my feelings. And I don't think that's a good friend, and I think maybe we need to take a break from being BFFs and maybe reassess our relationship. Then at the end, we learned Superman was afraid Lex's new weapon would hurt Batman if they tried to help Superman take him down. But this backfires because Batman goes behind Superman's back to figure out why Superman has replaced him. So because two grown men don't know how to communicate, feelings were hurt, Batman's life was endangered anyways, and I'm really not sure what was going on with that robot because it was mentioned that it was super domineering towards Superman. So we may have seen some sort of sexual fetish play out throughout this issue. I don't know. I don't judge. So that is five times in the 50s that a simple conversation could have solved 100% of their problems. And if you think this was bad, the 60s and 70s were worse. I know you think, how could it get worse than these five stories I told you? They're not reasonable adults. They're just not. Thumbs up if you're a human. It helps out the channel. If you're not a human... I really, I got nothing for that. I just, if you're not a human, that's pretty cool, though. <sighs> We're a flawed race, so if you're coming to this planet to kind of judge us, I want you to know that the internet comments you see are not a reflection of the best of our species. It's not. Besides that, come back for new comic videos, Game of Thrones videos, Star Wars videos, anything sci-fi fantasy related. Here's to you, Batman and Superman. May your love be eternal. Hey, Batman, there's this new mob in town, and I suspect that they want to kill you, like every other mob that comes into Gotham City, because you are the goddamn Batman. How about we work together, uh, get rid of this mob, and make sure that they don't spread fear and terror.